Okay, hi YouTube and hi people who are here during the recording. I am very excited because we are going to be reacting to a video and commenting on a video that is called The Downfall of Katie Morton, YouTube's Corrupt Therapist. Whenever I hear Katie Morton slander, I smile. I think Katie Morton is one of the most dangerous people who've ever been on this platform. Um, I think she has time and time again abused her powers um, and abused the notion of mental health. And um, I'm very interested to get into this video. Also, this is on Uncle Herman's channel, who, Uncle Herman, I have such a special, like, just special place in my heart because whenever I was like up and coming as like a drama channel, they were also up and coming as a YouTube channel. And we used to just like talk and like hype each other up. So I have so much love for them. Um, but anyway, let's get into this video. This is on Uncle Herman's channel. And again, I'm smiling. Okay. That sense of like, ugh, that feeling. Like, is that, isn't that creepy? It's so yeah, creepy. Okay. It's like, we're... oh my God, sorry. I didn't mean to pause already. I forgot she did that in the Jake Paul series when she was talking about people being sociopaths and like their tendencies to like do things. She was like, they're so creepy. Those kind of people are so creepy. Imagine you're a therapist saying that about you, but it's okay because she really isn't one. We're gonna have to take a shower. <laughs> no, and I think that's yeah. a, I've talked about that a lot. You can't force anyone into treatment because you can't make them get better. I just want to take the time to address all the hate and confusion, really, that Shane and I have received for our video together that came out last Thursday. I think it's interesting that she herself says, yeah, I'm not very proud about that. They can, like, go on. They're like, I would never intentionally create content that would ever hurt or upset anyone. Again, my goal is to educate and empower you. And I was honestly shocked that people were upset about the video that I did with Shane because if you don't- I didn't know she addressed it. I didn't know she addressed it. Oh, I want to watch that video. I didn't know she addressed it. Oh, I'm going to be watching that. I don't know how this was set up. Shane called me and asked if he'd come over and just film me telling him how I would go about diagnosing a sociopath. Welcome to 2021 and today I'm kicking it off by talking about YouTube therapists. One particular YouTube therapist called Katie Morton. Now you might have seen her in Shane- Mental health expert it said under her name. I don't know about all that. Dawson's documentary series or on her eponymous YouTube channel or even the videos that are starting to come out about her slightly dodgy activities on the platform. Oop, not creep show art! <laughs> Speaking of things that didn't age well. Uh, when a therapist starts making YouTube videos, they can reach the right people and be helpful. And I have nothing against therapy. I think it's an amazing thing. But there's something about Katie that has never sat right with me. And a few of the ways in which she's been conducting herself online recently have raised some issues with myself and fellow YouTube viewers alike. So today, let's have a look into the dark truth behind Katie Morton and see why and how she's suddenly being turned on online. So Katie Morton is a licensed therapist according to her website. She runs her own private <laughs> according to her. practice and aims to share mental health information across social media and destigmatize mental health and therapy, which is all great and I'm fully for destigmatizing mental health issues and I'm absolutely all for people getting out. I think it's so funny that she's having a conversation about like um destigmatizing, you know, talking about mental health, yet in her videos with Shane, all she did was shame people for actually having mental health problems. Access to the right help. However, what Katie Morton says in her mission statement versus how she presents herself on social media are quite different in my opinion. Let's start by talking about the Shane Dawson documentary that kind of made her Ooh. famous, The Mind of Jake Paul. Now this series saw Shane Dawson bring Katie on as an undercover- We need to watch this. I think this is going to be the next um, series that we do on my channel um, in terms of um, Shane. You know the way we're doing it? So let me know by the way if you want me to watch them and do condensed like 10 minute videos or you want me to like watch them with you on here and then upload them. I can do either or. I think watching them in- their entirety will probably be better honestly than condensing them because there's a lot of moments that you just need to like watch it to see. A therapist to secretly psychoanalyze Jake Paul which is a morally questionable Oh my god I forgot they like least. tricked him into analyzing yeah. him. Yeah.
experience in your life? What did you learn? For a licensed therapist, the things that she was saying about antisocial personality disorder were quite harmful, in my opinion. For someone who markets herself as a destigmatizer of mental health, she sure added to the stigma surrounding antisocial personality disorder. Others, um, so using anything they can to get their needs met. People aren't people, they're just tools to be used in their life. Shane's dramatic ass. <laughs> Mama, he was. He was waiting for the, the the Twitter girls to use him as a reaction meme any fucking moment. Me when, me when the pizza arrives, like. For their game, whatever it is. Well, but they don't have emotions, so like they wouldn't cry. They might if they thought it made them fit in or like get what they want, because they're deceitful. I've met a lot of YouTubers. I've definitely met a few where I've got that gut feeling. Mm -hmm. um, that, ugh, we're talking about like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling <laughs> <laughs> it's um, really gross and it's just creepy that her let's destigmatize mental health her talking about people with mental health issues they're creepy they're disgusting they make me want to gag <laughs> like is terrifying yeah that's hence the, like ugh, that feeling like ugh. is that isn't that creepy? It's so yeah, creepy. Okay. It's like, we're gonna have to take a shower after this. I mean, nearly every She has to take a shower after it when talking about mental health, but but don't worry, she's a licensed person to talk about mental health. All right, all right, all right. Every time that she describes it, she uses fear-mongering words and treats the disorder as if it's disgusting and something to be feared, which is the exact opposite of how a mental health professional should be talking about a mental health disorder. Especially when this whole documentary was trying to diagnose someone with something without their knowledge or consent, and creating fear about something that's already incredibly misunderstood. And then to broadcast that to millions of people, it's just very harmful. And right. Katie was marketed as a voice of reason on this documentary and a professional in her field. So then to say all of this about a widely misunderstood disorder is going to make people believe her. Not once did she mention that the disorder was treatable or that people could get help for it. She just massively added to the stigma of this disorder for the millions of impressionable people who know nothing about it watching. And also fuck Shane Dawson for literally giving her that jumpstart fame because he wanted someone who was going to come on and be a therapist and say that Jake Paul was psychotic. Like, he's so psycho. And no real therapist would do that, so the next best thing is Katie Morton. And, you know... Sh Hello? So shame on him for, like, actively seeking out someone who was a therapist who would just fill his agenda. Okay, boys... Can we not fight? Please. I'm gonna have to get Katie Morton to come and diagnose y'all. Of course, Katie wasn't responsible for all of that. Shane Dawson is guilty of perpetuating this as well. But in my opinion, the way that she dealt with this disorder was incredibly unprofessional and ultimately very harmful. Then there's the whole ethics of going in as an undercover therapist in the first place to try and evaluate someone with the expectation that they have an undiagnosed mental health disorder. Not the books with the, like the little like highlighter points. Bitch, her ass did not read those books. Out their consent for a documentary is something that never sat right with me. Dr. Todd Grande made a great video unpacking the ethics of this from his perspective that I will link fully in the description. And he talked about the code of ethics that therapists are supposed to follow and the ways in which this documentary potentially violated them. He's also done a video about all- Wasn't she an ED therapist? Yeah, cause she made the video with Eugenia. Well, apparently she was the therapist for fucking everything. Everything and nothing at the same time the things that Katie got wrong about antisocial personality. I don't know how you can be a therapist in so many broad topics and be shit at all of them. Disorder, which I'd also recommend. And let's not forget the time that she called Shane Dawson an empath. What am I? <laughs> because, like, I feel like I attract sociopaths. Potentially. And I'm not so soft. Yeah, like... <laughs> Because you're so soft. You're so baby. 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 What the fuck? You're sitting there with like a 30 something year old man. She wasn't blowing smoke up his ass. She was eating his ass. Woo. I'm not. 
calling out people. I'm not saying there's certain YouTubers who I've like done videos with or any of that. I just mean in my real life. Like, yeah. I feel like, but I also feel like I like get them the sad and I want to help them and all of that. Because you're empathic. Why is Stevie Wonder always smiling? Because he doesn't know he's a n So an empath. I've heard that before. <laughs> Uncle Herman is shady for including that clip. To tell someone they're an empath without even knowing them, but calling other people psychos and crazies and you want to wash, like, bathe yourself after having, you know, talked to them is crazy. Yeah. What's like, that? The damage she did to the world whenever she called Shane Dawson an empath, because we didn't hear the end of this word for years. It's essentially, like, we feel for other people. That was kind of racist, wasn't it? I didn't mean it to be. Oops. Like... Socio this is the opposite. An antisocial personality disorder or a sociopath would be your antithesis, like the complete opposite. So every time you think, oh, but like, that must really suck for them, they would have none of that. But this isn't the only way in which Katie has been seemingly going against her mission statement. Today is the bi sister anniversary. I know. And. Hello? Shh. Hello? Would Milo happen to be in here? What's wrong? Come on up. Come on. Are you okay? Sorry, give me a moment. Come on. Are you okay? What's wrong? Why are you being so vocal? Do you want to come say hello to everyone? Oh, you stink of cat food. Can you say hello? Say hello? Do you want to say hello? Your cheeks look rather large today, Milo. How much food did you eat? Good boy. Well, he got his attention. There we go of destigmatizing mental health and helping her followers. This next issue with Katie Morton surrounds her promotion of the app BetterHelp. Oh, now, Jesus. BetterHelp became infamous a few years ago when influencers were being called out for promoting Milo's it. Milo's a British short-term. The app promoted itself as an online counseling platform where people could contact licensed therapists and mental health experts who were available to help people over the app via text, phone call, or video chat. However, people started to notice that the app- I'm gonna be honest, I never loved the idea of BetterHelp, and I'm not even saying this like app, because obviously I find out that and like the shady you know sites of better help and stuff like that i never so better help if you don't know is like an online therapy thing where you can talk to therapists you know all the time whatever and like whenever cat hairs um i never loved the concept of it because if i'm going to go to therapy i don't but like and i would love to but like it's just so hard to get booked in i'm very expensive over here i would love to go to a therapist but i would need to be face to face with them and I get the, the concept of like, um, you know, Jesus Christ, just so many cat hairs. You feel you can be more open if you're not face to face and stuff like that. And a lot of people love it and stuff, but I'm gonna need to be face to face with someone to feel like I can trust them enough to open up. Jesus, Milo, your cat hairs are crazy terms of service told a slightly different story than that of the marketing campaign that YouTubers were promoting. They found that though they promoted licensed therapists using their platforms- They promoted licensed therapists. You were actually talking to Adam McIntyre. You were, talk were talking to chat GBT. Their terms stated that we do not control the quality of the counsellor services and we do not determine whether any counsellor is qualified to provide any specific service as well as whether a counsellor is categorised correctly or matched correctly to Crazy. you. And that the counsellor services are not a complete substitute for face-to-face -face examination or session by a licensed qualified professional. A slightly different story to the therapy that they're promoting. Now, all of this came out in October of 2018 and after that most YouTubers stopped promoting the app, but Katie Morton is still promoting it to this day. As pointed out by the YouTube channel Cringy in their video that I'll link below, Katie- Oh, that was the one you guys were talking about in the chat. If you don't know, people were like, you need to watch Cringy's video. Oh, he's just... oh my god, look at both of them. Look at both of them. Hi. 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 Oh my god, Beauty Obsessed. Thank you so much for subscribing. You're regular. 
most recent video still have an affiliate link to BetterHelp, meaning that she's still getting paid to promote the app. It's oh also God, interesting to note that Katie's company striked down Cringy's video when it first came out, which to me suggests that she has something to hide, or at the very least is unable to take these criticisms. Katie's ties to BetterHelp go back to 2017, and it's been theorised that she has stakes in this company. So now, this fucked is all up. alleged and speculation, but Katie Morton has been promoting BetterHelp from the very beginning, and is cited as co-founding an undisclosed company two years before the launch of the BetterHelp app. Of course, these could be unrelated, but it's suspicious to me that she would continue to promote something that has been called out for not providing the right help to those who need it, especially when her whole ethos is supposedly about helping people with their mental health in the right ways. Katie's video- Can we get some tomatoes in the chat for Katie Morton, please? I just want the screen to be filled with that while she's on. Is ...themselves on her YouTube channel are also interesting and call into question her validity as a therapist. Now, it says on her website there that is she no is a licensed marriage and family therapist, yet the videos that she makes span across Thank all you. genres of mental health issues she can provide some knowledge on these topics but when we oh look my at the God, things so that many she videos. said about antisocial personality disorder in the Shane Dawson documentary and the way Wait, that she stigmatized it it makes me question why she wouldn't just stick to the topics that <laughs> she specializes in to avoid spreading You're throwing misinformation. Them on her. One online review of Katie found by YouTuber Repzilla showed someone expressing concern over Katie's ethics and the ways in which she was talking about topics that were way outside of the scope of her practice. Misrepresenting herself as a licensed mental health expert and most importantly the material she chooses to give a five minute spill on is far outside of the scope of her practice. I'm uncertain if she knows the importance of empirical data and I have witnessed her providing treatment suggestions for psycholo psychological conditions that may be clinically contradicted. Repzilla also speculated in this video that one of her videos on emotional was actually directly ripped from an internet article on the topic. Katie has even admitted herself that she doesn't know much about certain topics. For example, in the Shane Dawson series where she was literally brought on board to observe someone without their consent for antisocial personality disorder, she was quoted talking about how she was unfamiliar with this disorder, saying, he came to me and said, hey, I want you to read and learn as much about antisocial personality disorder. So then, just confirming, hi Min Child, just confirming that the only reason Shane Dawson brought Katie Morton onto this documentary was because he just wanted someone who was a therapist but would spiel the narrative that he wanted, which was Jake Paul is psychotic. I don't know much about it, so I started reading research articles, she recalled, adding that she found the condition fascinating. She was then quoted saying that the backlash was mainly because of the sheer amount of views. It brings in a bunch of people who would never watch videos of Shane's or Jake Paul's or mine, essentially using the old trick of branding anyone who didn't like the series as a hater or a troll, and not someone with a valid reason to be questioning the malpractice and stigma that she was responsible for perpetuating online. This next section comes with a trigger warning for images of someone with an ED. Kay I think we're possibly entering the Eugenia Cooney section. She has also received backlash for her videos with Eugenia Cooney. Now, Eugenia Cooney is a YouTuber who is unfortunately known mostly for her appearance. And last year, her friends got in contact with our friend Katie Morton to try and get Eugenia help. Not Katie our friend, Katie Morton. <laughs> She advised them in emails to get Eugenia to go to her friend Jacqueline's apartment and stage an intervention. And she helped them... I've never seen this original video in full. I actually didn't know that it was Katie Morton. Hi Jacqueline, thanks for reaching out. I'm happy to hop on a call tomorrow if that works. Unfortunately, we can't make anyone get help, but if she does have a therapist or doctor, they can 5150 her. Happy to talk about it. I'm so sorry this is happening. I'm going to show you how to watch. What time works best for you tomorrow? Thanks for the update. I agree the best move is to get her out of the house. Call the PT time, whatever. I wish this was easier. It's really hard for when we aren't her parents and she's not a child. I hope she responds soon. Um... Wow, I actually didn't know that it was Katie Morton who um, gave that idea to, um, like, trick Eugenia into leaving her house to get 5150. And I'm going to be honest, I blame Katie Morton and Shane Dawson for... not caring about Eugenia Cooney. They did not care about Eugenia Cooney. What they cared about was getting a clickbait of Eugenia Cooney and this word of recovery. And look what we did. We we helped her. We helped her. And what they did was they Shane used his fame as a way of um 
as a way of peer pressuring someone who was struggling into getting help. However, the way that it was done, then for the end of time has now ruined said person's perception of treatment because it was forced in such a short period of time to fit someone else's agenda, which was Shane Dawson and Katie Morton's, which has now permanently altered in that other person, Eugenia Cooney's mind, the idea of treatment. And if people are, people say all the time, oh my God, you know, we're commenting on Eugenia's streams to, to get help or go to treatment or whatever. However, what people also don't understand is the last time that was done to Eugenia Cooney was Shane Dawson and Katie Morton doing this, and that has probably permanently traumatized her, and they are at fault for her now picturing any form of recovery or any form of treatment or anything of that as a trauma response, because that's what they did to her. They put her through a traumatizing thing so that they could fit or so that she could fit their narrative of they needed a series done immediately, they're going to send her away and they're going to do this or whatever. There wasn't even that interval period of let's, you know, get you treatment, let's do this, let's let's talk about what's going to happen, let's whatever. No, they 51 50 her and never gave her an option, never whatever, so she will always, in her mind, associate that with trauma being forced to do something. And anytime people now say, like, get help Eugenia can or whatever like that that's where her mind will go because Shane Dawson and Katie Morton are evil 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 people who've now forever insinuated not even to just Eugenia but to the audience that recovery is something that um we want not what you want it's what we want and that's not how it works And yeah, what Susie said, Eugenia has talked many times that she doesn't want to go into treatment because how 2019 traumatized her, or 2018. It's all Shane and Katie's fault. 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 Fart? Fault. Wow! I really fucked that word up! Set up a 5150, which is when a person is deemed a danger to themselves or others. From this, Eugenia went and got help at a treatment facility, which is positive. However, once she came back online, Katie Morton made a video with her talking about the situation, and this is where we start to see some strange behaviour from Katie. As Eugenia tells Katie the story of what happened, Katie acts shocked that her friends would do that to her, as if she hadn't been the very person <gasps> that recommended it to them. So and then so I were you at someone's house? Yes, we were actually oh, okay, at someone's apartment. I was thinking you were at the plate. Apartment. One of them... <gasps> Oh, that is so fucked up. That is so fucked up. And now again, Eugenia will associate this time period with people just lying to her. Left. And I figured they were going to get the other person that was supposedly going to be showing up. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I see that these two other <gasps> ladies come in. And I was kind of not expecting that. I didn't really know who they were. This is so and fucked then, up. And um, it turns out, I guess they were um, two... I don't know if they were like social workers or they worked with some mental health company. I don't, it could, I mean, from what I know and- it's... Oh my God, she was the one that told them to do it. That if, like, let's say I was worried about you. Right. And mainly the way that I see this usually playing out is if it's like your mom was yeah. really worried and you lived together. Yeah. And she was like, we need to get you in. And you were like, no, no, no. And she was like, I'm worried about your safety, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then you could call, um, the police or the pet team it's called the psycho uh, oh, okay. psychological evaluation team pet um it might have been them then. so my guess would be it's probably the p my guess oh my god she was the one that orchestrated it <gasps> the petty. It's also interesting to see the comment that Katie has chosen to pin under her video with Eugenia defending her own actions. It reads, I understand why some people may seem concerned that Katie's contradicting herself by informing her friends about 5150, but also seemingly supporting Eugenia's stance that was traumatic and not always the best move. However, a couple of points. Katie was informing them of the process but didn't actively trigger it. She was trying to help a person in need in a professional and informative manner. That's her role. In this video, she's clearly offering Eugenia unconditional positive regard 
and empathy. She's echoing back Eugenia's feelings and validating them. This is incredibly important and would have helped Eugenia feel comfortable and heard. Ending with, Katie handled this fantastically. Now it's interesting to hear this defence. It makes sense as to why Katie would pin one of the only comments that strokes her ego and tells her that she's handled this fantastically. But also, if she knew that she was a great therapist who handled it fantastically, she wouldn't have to weed out the backlash to find the one person telling her in their own opinion what they think of her therapy techniques. This situation was not handled well, in my humble opinion. To help orchestrate an intervention, even if it's just giving her advice over email and then acting shocked about it, is not the behaviour of a therapist that I would trust. So that just about concludes all of the ways that I think that Katie Morton is a little bit morally dubious and not a therapist that I would trust to be giving out all of this information on YouTube. I am fully for people getting the right help. What are the comments on this? Calling a mental disorder gross and creepy is disgusting, especially coming from a licensed therapist. My fiance is a therapist and I can't imagine him talking about his clients the way that Katie talks about people with mental illnesses that are already stigmatized. The red flag I noticed was when she said sociopath over antisocial personality disorder. A therapist calling me gross and disgusting because of my mental disorder is actually gross and disgusting. I don't understand how she has a license. Her ethics are twisted. Maybe she claims she's a licensed therapist because she stated that she lists, you know, on her personal website. Yeah, I mean, very, 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 um, like, agreeing points in the comments. Just fuck Katie Morton. Boo. Boo.